Today's reading is by Bob Holmes, founder and editor of the online community and blog, Contemplative Monk, for which he is also the resident singer, photographer, and muse. This is Breathscapes. When the east wind breathes into your soul and the morning sun warms your face, pause in the solitude, sink into the stillness, expanding with every breath, savoring as things settle and clear. In still clarity, perceive with childlike wonder the breath of dawn, the light dancing in your heart to heal you, to hold you, and to make you whole. When I was a kid, my brother David liked to watch Evil Knievel. And what my older brother did, I did too. David is seven years older than I am. We are far enough apart in age that we actually like each other. We have a sister between us. We won't talk about her. <laughs> I'm just teasing, of course, but it's fun. David and I look alike too, except for the fact that he's totally bald now. So on weekend afternoons, we would sit too close to that big console TV, you know, TVs when they were this deep, we would sit too close to the TV, listening to what the commentators had to say. And of course they had a lot to say and nothing to say at exactly the same time. They just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. And we gleefully anticipated some spectacular stunt. I mean, after all, we're talking about Evil Knievel here. Evil Knievel, a daredevil like no other. He was considered good looking, even if rough around the edges. He was like a G.I. Joe doll dressed in a flashy white jumpsuit and cape. You know, when I think about him now, I see sort of like a flying Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> On his motorcycle, he jumped cars and canyons and threw hoops of fire. And all these many decades later, he still holds the record for jumping the most buses on a motorcycle. He jumped 14, 14. And if it wasn't abundantly clear by that stunt, the man was totally unhinged. <laughs> but he was an amazing showman and self-promoter and he knew how to draw a crowd. He often said that kids wanted to be like him, men wanted to be him, and women wanted to be with him. He was a man of another age, that is for sure. A man of another time, colorful and narcissistic too. But the world wanted the likes of him as much as he wanted fame. But there is another evil Knievel quote that when I read it made me feel a certain affinity for the risk-taking, body-busting braggart of a showman when asked why he repeatedly took his life into his own hands, doing these terrifying and wildly unsuccessful jumps on a motorcycle or in a car, he answered, I love the feeling of fresh air on my face and the wind blowing through my hair. That is nuts. <laughs> That is really maybe not a good reason, <laughs> but it makes perfect sense. Now, while it's true that I don't know you all, I don't know you well, I know you just a tiny bit in this little bit of time we've had together and the months ahead of us, I'll get to know you maybe a little bit better, but I am willing to bet that none of us here have taken the risks that Evil Knievel took. 
but lots of us feel the, the need to have fresh air on our face and to feel the wind blowing through our hair or over our scalp. We drive with the car windows down. We buy convertibles to feel it. Folks love sailing and skydiving. Indoor skydiving is all about a big fan underneath you and feels spectacular if you are so inclined to try it. The forced air pushed through an MRI machine is soul and sanity saving if you ask me when you are lying still on that table with jackhammer sounds pounding all around you. The little whoosh over your face, you're like, okay, okay, I can do this. The Dutch even have a practice uh, known in English. I would never try to pronounce it in Dutch. <laughs> the expression is uh, called outblowing, which is the intentional practice of spending time out in the wind to clear your mind. Right? We can imagine that on a windy day. There's nothing like the feel of the wind. When I was a kid uh, growing up in Manhattan, there was this block on 89th Street and Madison Avenue. Maybe some of you know the block. An enormous building went up on that street and it runs the whole length, 89th to 90th, and it's the windy block. Every day, every month, every season, this block, there's a whoosh because of the height of the building. It creates a wind tunnel. When I was a kid, we'd walk down the windy block and lean into the wind. Remember doing that? When you didn't weigh so much that the wind would not hold you up? <laughs> Reading about the Dutch practice of outblowing, I was reminded of some of my favorite country songs, and one song in particular by a defunct band called the Sunbolt, which describes driving down the road with the windows down, with the wind taking away your worries and your woes. They're just flying out behind you. All your worries and your failures and your shames and your distress. The song talks of feeling freed from all that heavy stuff it flies out into the wind to make way in our bodies for new experiences and new times. So I think we get it. And of course, I'm not about to jump 14 buses on a motorcycle. Heck, I can't even drive a motorcycle. I get what Evil Knievel was saying, and I think many of us get it. There is nothing like the feel of the wind. It is sometimes cleansing or soothing or grounding like the Dutch outblowing. At other times, it's big and scary and even destructive. It reminds us of nature's raw power and our place in creation. It really puts you in your place when you're out on a windy day. The wind is elemental. It can be frightening and delightful. It is essential. It is the movement of air that allows us to speak and to sing and to create music. It's mighty and marvelous, completely invisible and absolutely necessary, fundamental to life. When I first read Evil's words on why he took up a career of stunts, I was reminded of a book I read when I was preparing for my son's birth so many, 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 many years ago. The author made a point of reminding new parents that everything a newborn experiences is entirely new. No surprise, really, there, but, you know, an aha moment for the expectant parents. And the very first of these new experiences that the author mentioned was the feeling of air moving over the newborn skin. The movement of air on our bodies and into our bodies through our first breath are our first sensations of life. Imagine how that must have felt imagine thinking air was weird, <laughs> that, that the feel of air on your skin was unusual. Oh, I've arrived into this strange new world, and what is that I feel? The feeling of air, the wind, and our breath 
are our first experiences of being alive. They are there at the beginning. And this is true in religious texts too. The wind is an early and then often mentioned sacred element. And we're gonna do some biblical exploration today because we are capable of being theologically and spiritually diverse without getting hooked into the language. So I invite you to be creative in your translation and just enjoy the stories. In the first chapter of Genesis and the first story of creation, describing the birth of the world, the story goes, in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form or shape, with darkness over the abyss, and a mighty wind swept across the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Before those well-known, oft-quoted words about light, we have the mighty wind, which in Hebrew is the Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the Most High. A mighty wind, the spirit of the Most High, the force of creation moves across the face of the deep and over the waters. It's there at the beginning, before light, before the dome of the sky and the stars are brought into being, before land, before plants, before people, before it all. The same word, ruach, is later used in the book of Genesis to describe the animating force that is breathed into the human being by the creator. I think this is one of my favorite passages in the Bible, too. And then the Most High formed the human of dust from the ground, and the Most High breathed into the human's nostrils the ruach, the breath of life, and the human became a living creature. And we are animated. The breath of life, the ruach, which in Greek is the pneuma, and Latin the spiritus, the breath of life, the ruach, the pneuma, or spiritus, is that animating force that brings us into being. And this word appears hundreds of times throughout the Hebrew and Christian Bibles. And like each, the ruach, the pneuma, the spiritus, in Taoist philosophy and healing, all forms of life are animated by an essential force, the qi, which, like the other words, means breath and air. And just as the Ruach and Numa and Spiritus are described, the Chi is that energy within all living beings. It is silent, formless, invisible, and yet permeates all things. One author has said that the Chi is to living beings what electricity is to our computers and appliances. Without it, all of our functions grind to a halt. So communicated through different words and different languages and found in different religions and philosophies, there is the animating wind, the breath of life, the vital force at our core. Indeed, it is so common, these references to the mighty wind or the breath of life, that some say that it is this spiritual essence at our center that defines us. We are not, as I imagine you have heard, said human beings having a spiritual experience we are spiritual beings having a human experience and that this breath of life this spirit of life at our center is what intimately and inextricably links us to all living beings and to the holy called by so many names as some of you may recall from your religious upbringing or practices of today. In the story of the burning bush, Moses speaking to the bush has the nerve, he has such chutzpah, Moses, to ask the name of his God. And the Most High answers, I am who I am. When written down, the name of the holy given to Moses is recorded as YHWH or YHVH, which was referred to as the sacred tetragrammaton meaning sacred four letters. As you may also know, the original Hebrew included no vowels. So the sacred tetragrammaton, Y-H-B-H, is considered literally unspeakable on its own. Any attempt to speak the tetragrammaton is 
fruitless, or some might say, in vain. Now, the unspeakability of the sacred Tetragrammaton has long been recognized, but some religious scholars, some thinkers, believe that this is intentional, that the invisible holy cannot be named, that whatever God is, whatever the nature of the numinous, that which is transcendent cannot be captured in a word. Some are convinced that YHBH is not a word to be pronounced, but the very sound of inhalation and exhalation. Some have noted that the letters YHBH represent breathing sounds, aspirated consonants that in the Hebrew alphabet would be transliterated as Yod, rhyming with road, the Y, Hey, rhyming with say, va, as in lava, and hey again. I invite you to join me in a little experiment with those, with yod, with yod, hey, va, hey. A little breathing that takes a minute to get the hang of, to be honest. It makes a little dry mouth because we're doing it through our mouths. It's a little like going to the doctor when they tell you to breathe, that they say, listen to your chest sounds, and you think you're making me breathe too fast. Like, really, I have to breathe again? Okay. It's a little of that. But we begin first with an exhalation of yod, an, an inhalation with hey, a gentle exhalation with va, a gentle inhalation with hey. So it's I invite you to try it if you'd like. On this subject, one contemporary Christian singer-songwriter, David Gray, has written, for too long there have been those who have insisted with a certain righteousness that the name of God is so holy that we dare not speak it because of how unworthy we human beings are. Instead, through this lens, it turns out that always, everywhere, all of the time, waking or sleeping, from the moment we are born until the moment we draw our final breath, we are speaking the name of the holy. The most high, the holy of holies, the source of life is the very sound of our breathing. Braggart, and stunning showman that he was. Evil Knievel tuned in to something greater than himself. May it be likewise for us. With every breath we take, may we feel the holy called by whatever name, moving through us and connecting us one to each other and to all living things. So may it be. And amen.